In addition to being one of the most talented and influential banjo players in the Pacific Northwest, Myron Hinkle established himself as a significant figure in banjo history through his ceaseless promotion of the instrument, a proud legacy which remains firmly intact years after his passing. Born in Elyria, Ohio in 1916, Myron Fay Hinkle began his musical career on the tenor banjo, just as the instrument was at its peak of popularity during the Roaring Twenties. As the Great Depression gripped the nation shortly thereafter, Myron recognized the opportunity to supplement his family's income with music and taught himself to play the piano as well. As banjo popularity waned in the 1940s, he concentrated on the piano, becoming well known for his strong boogie-woogie and stride styles. After doing his part for the war effort at the Bremerton Naval Shipyards, Myron spent the remainder of the 1940s and 50s on the road as the leader of a popular jazz and dance combo. While professionally successful, Hinkle tired of the insecurity and family strain associated with a musician's lifestyle, and in the late 1950s, he and his wife Helen settled down in Seattle, where he took a job with Boeing aircraft by day while continuing to perform at night. As if he'd been preparing for the journey for the previous three decades, beginning in 1960, Myron Hinkle set out on a musical path which resulted in him being recognized as one of the Northwest premier banjo players. Although originally hired as the piano player at a popular Seattle night spot called the Blue Banjo, when the owner discovered his banjo passed, he suggested that Myron take up the instrument again and start a banjo band. Soon, the Blue Banjo Boys were local celebrities, making a popular LP album, Noise from the Blue Banjo, as well as performing at the 1962 Seattle World's Fair. In addition to performing, Hinkle soon found himself to be an in-demand banjo teacher as well. Encouraged by the professional success of the Blue Banjo Boys, Byron founded a similar group of banjo enthusiasts called the Seattle Banjo Club in 1962. With a core membership made up of many of Hinkle's banjo students, the Seattle Banjo Club recently celebrated its 46th anniversary and is still going strong. For Hinkle, the offer of a new daytime job in Aberdeen resulted in a new nighttime gig as well. Starting in 1965, Myron began an incredible 24-year run at Sourdough Lill's 1898 bar in Westport, Washington. While his relocation meant leaving the Seattle Banjo Club behind, Hinkle's new situation quickly found him in contact with local banjo enthusiasts, teaching more than ever, and in 1968, forming the Grays Harbor Banjo Band another Myron Hinkle contribution to the promotion of the banjo which continues to the present day. Remembered as being inherently shy by nature, Myron Hinkle's love for music and the banjo could not be contained, resulting in two of his seven children, daughter Linda and son Ron, ultimately becoming banjo players themselves. As an offshoot of the Grays Harbor Banjo Band, in 1972, Myron formed a youth band called the Jubilee Five, which included his own banjo-playing offspring, along with other children of Grays Harbor Banjo Band members. The Jubilee Five stayed together for five years, performing throughout Oregon and western Washington state, both in personal appearances, as well as part of a regular television variety series. Although failing eyesight made the reading of music difficult, in the late 1980s, Myron became the banjoist for the Hume Street Preservation Jazz Band in Aberdeen. He stayed with that band just long enough to be part of a memorable recording which documented his unique banjo solo skills before turning the band's banjo chair over to daughter Linda, who carried on the Hinkle banjo connection with the band for another 11 years. In the early 1990s, Myron, Linda, and Ron Hinkle formed yet another new trio, performing regularly as Papa Hink and his Little Stinkers. That band, as well as the Grays Harbor Band, kept Myron musically active until 1999, when declining health made him put his banjo in its case for the final time. Sadly, Myron Hinkle passed away in November of 2001.
Although limited travel made his a regional star, Myron Hinkle's impact upon the banjo fraternity of the Pacific Northwest is considerable. Carried on today by his children, who remain active in the banjo world, as well as the members of the bands he founded, the Seattle Banjo Club and the Grays Harbor Banjo Band, Myron Hinkle's banjo legacy remains a vibrant and vital part of today's banjo world. <laughs>